All right. Awesome. Again, a very, very warm welcome uh, to everyone on the call today. We're super happy to have you. Uh, this is yet another amazing mentor live session that we're going to do. Um, I will now hand things off to uh, Ms. Beatrice Wynn, and uh, she will go ahead and get the introduction started and in order. B, take it away. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm so glad that all of you are here. And we are super excited today because we have like an incredible mentor, a member of our community that, that is going to walk us through and have a conversation about pretty much how to write an outstanding resume. And also uh, just talking about just his experience hiring uh, great talent around the world. So we're excited that you are here. And again, I, I'm Beatrice Wynn. I am uh, in charge of our community here at Cybery, and we're super excited about this session. So in terms of like the agenda for today, a couple of reminders for everybody. Uh, I'm going to introduce our, our incredible mentor, Sam Carson, and then we're going to go straight to the session. So just a couple of slides, because we want to make sure that you have time to ask any questions that you may have during the chat. So, and again, this, this session is going to be recorded and we're going to upload that into our platform. So that way you can watch it later or for those that couldn't join us live, can also watch it again uh, later. So uh, reminders, ask all the questions that you want on the chat. Sam and myself um, are going to go over those, share those with Sam Carson, our mentor, and pretty much just make those uh, available for everybody so that way everybody interacts. So feel free to ask any questions uh, on the chat. And then if you're not speaking, just in case you're unmuted, just mute uh, your mic so that way we don't get a lot of feedback. And then again, take advantage of our Slack community to connect with our mentors and as well to ask any other questions. So um, we're going to just take it away and I'm going to introduce uh, Sam Carson, our cyber mentor. So we're super excited to have Sam here because he is currently um, cybersecurity service director and program manager for a large global IT consulting firm, an incredible company. He focuses mostly on enterprise security operations center, um, solution delivery, management, identity access and management, data protection, uh, incident response management across um, giving advice, consulting to multiple, multiple clients um, of his firm. He also recruits and trains multiple and global teams around the world. So he has tons of experience looking at resumes, making recommendations, training and helping those in the field to advance in their careers. And obviously he has multiple studies in the area in IT and cyber from MIT, Harvard University. He also has a, a bachelor's in computer science um, and an MBA from Athabasca University. So we are super excited to have Sam here. Uh, thank you for your time, Sam. And also thank you for being part of the community and always supporting our learners. Thank you, Bea. I appreciate your introduction there. Um, thanks everybody for joining. I appreciate it. And, uh, welcome to everyone from, uh, I see people from all over the globe here. I saw someone from Nairobi, Kenya as well. So welcome. Um, I'm based in Irvine, California and, um, working with the team here to see how we can help each other. And, uh, you know, my, my passion is working with people and, uh, helping people move forward. Uh, let's move to the next slide, please. Uh, we're going to be looking at writing outstanding resumes here. Um, so to be able to write an outstanding resume, um, first thing you got to do on the resume at the top of it is, um, specify your goal. What is it you want to accomplish? Uh, make the best impression on, on your, in your resume to be able to get that interview. Um, what I find is that I hire a lot of people. What I find is that if people don't give me a summary at the top of what their goals are, um, if you're too much of a generalist, then um, I need to sort of dig out what are your strengths and things like that. So say at the top, I'm looking for a position as a cybersecurity SOC analyst, or I'm looking for a position as a vulnerability management um, engineer, or I'm looking for a position as a, a, you know, a cloud security consultant, et cetera. So those kinds of things help there. Um, and then I put that firstly on the top. We're going to show you some examples later on of, of what I'm talking about. Um, there's many ways to create uh, the resume and to move forward. Um, next slide, please. Mia. Okay. The other thing also, the next thing to do is, is, is when you're looking at a resume, um, 
Choose a good format. And, you know, you, you obviously, a lot of you probably are searching on the web. There's tons of different templates that are there and formats that are there. Um, another thing that I also uh, which I've not written down on here is I, for example, as a mentor, even here in cyber and, and, and other areas, um, I help people review the resumes as well. Absolutely get people to review your resumes for you as well. Okay. Um, like I mentioned, the, the second point talks about having a clear job objective. What kind of job are you looking for? Be specific. Um, and then, you know, there are people that are very experienced. Um, people have multiple years of experience and they come back and I said, so what kind of job are you looking for? And they're like, um, anything in IT. It doesn't help me at all. I need to know what are you looking for. If you tell me, hey, I'm a, a Java developer or I'm a Python developer or, you know, any of those things, then I know what, 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 it, what you want to do. Um, also, in the summary, put down your strongest skills that you have. If you say, hey, you know, I, I, love doing, I love doing programming and I'm not a people person. I just want to sit behind a keyboard and code away. That makes me really happy. That's great. I'm going to find you a job like that. Um, other people come in and say, you know what? I love coding, but I also like, um, I'm very analytical. I'm looking for something with analysis as well. So maybe you want to do business analytics as well as part of your, your work that, you, that you're doing. Other people come in and they say, for example, I'm mentoring another guy. He's got a degree in psychology. And um, he wants to now move into IT. And he says, you know, I'm not a real technical person. I said, you don't have to be technical. I encourage him to go into project management. So he says, oh, that's great. I'm going to be working with people. I help them uh, build, the, build their resumes, you know. So those kinds of things you've got to look at. The other point I've also got down here, like I said, with people coming from different backgrounds and different skill sets, you, you should create multiple resumes and emphasize the points that you have. What I always look for in a resume, say, for instance, um, I'm looking for someone, I say I'm looking for, uh, as a matter of fact, right now, I'm looking for a, um, a person with strong skills in GRC, which is governance, risk, and compliance. So I look for those keywords that you have, and I look for the tool sets that you use to be able to do your job, you know? Um, another guy I'm looking for is, 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 is a, 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 a SOC analyst or, or SOC uh, manager, you know? Um, so basically, we're looking at people like that, and uh, when when we have um, when we have uh, when we have uh, people those skill sets, that sort of triggers something for me as well. Okay. So in the job experience as well, what you should do is, depending on the templates you choose, um, you need to list your jobs in reverse chronological order. Um, also, your resume should be very short and concise. I have people that have like a resume of four or five pages, too long. Okay. Sometimes experience is good. I hardly look at pages four or five. I look at the first two pages and that's it. You know, I'll skim through. It's what I do. So list the jobs, list the tool sets, list the skills that you've used. Also list any accomplishments. So for example, if you say, you know, I helped um, refine the risk management process and I improved the process by introducing um, something into, into, into the works of the job, you know. Um, or I, I help to uh, automate certain processes. Put those things down there as well. Those are kinds of things I look for from a hiring manager perspective. Um, also, if you've had any accolades or so, or if you've had any um, promotions or things like that, something you've done well. Um, so those are all kinds of things I, I add in there as well. Um, and again, the important thing is when you're listing your jobs, make sure that um, you... Uh, the format becomes important. It keeps coming back to me. Is I look for white space around the resume as well. Some resumes are like really busy and very hard to read. Um, so that's also what I look for. Okay. All right. Next slide, please. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing I look for is education. Okay. Now here also um, important to learn. List all the education you have. If you have certifications, again, list from the latest to to the oldest that you have. Uh, sometimes some people like to put the degree on top first and then they put other courses there. You can separate things out like that as well. Um, also, for example, if you've taken courses, for example, I'll give a little plug to Cybery here, is basically to, if you've done any courses with Cybery.com with, with Cybery or Cybery.net, um, um, list those there as well. You know, um, There are a lot of uh, courses you can do from different places and just uh, any of those things you have, add them there. Um, like I said, there's a lot of universities that are um, that are that are um, 
uh, offering different kinds of courses, certificate courses, things like that. Um, I, I have a lot of people asking me the question with education, say, you know what, I really want to get into IT. I've been wanting to do this for, and, and, and I have no idea how to, how to get into cybersecurity. Honestly, and I'm not, this is, this is completely unbiased, but working with cyber, with the cyber.com site, um, it gives you all kinds of career paths that are really, really good. I found those helpful. Like I said, I mentor a lot of people. As a matter of fact, um, I mentor some students in, in South Africa, and I actually show them the site and say, hey, look at this, see what you like, and, and go from there. You know? um, so, so those are things that are useful that you can add as well. Um, someone, I think, uh, I just kind of briefly saw a question that I'm going to answer it right away now, if you don't mind, B, is that okay? Yeah? Okay, someone mentioned that if you have a long list of skills, do you sort of um, reduce that and then don't put those on there? Sometimes that's a good idea because honestly, I don't, unless it's relevant, um, I'll tell you I'm hiring some person with, um, with mainframe experience, for example, and they have done mainframe way back when, you know, that's okay to put that there. But if the things are not relevant, um, what I do is that, like, like a lot of you, maybe my career started off with, um, I was doing work as a contractor. So I work for a lot of different companies. So I have a lot of companies I can list. Um, what I did is I just list the companies and I put the title of what I did for them there, you know? And that way I don't have too much detail in it. Try and minimize, uh, minimize the, 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 the length of the resume. It makes it easier. Um, I also work with a lot of recruiters. I have some recruiter friends as well. And, um, you know, I, I, I asked him, him too. Uh, he's a very, very good friend of mine. I said, how long do you take to look at a resume? He says, I don't spend more than two minutes. That's it. You know? So they look at it very, very quickly. So that, that's important. Okay, next slide. Another really important point here is um, adding any kind of volunteer work or extracurricular activities you've done or doing, you know, very, very important. Um, again, what that shows me is that, you know, you're a well-rounded person um, that you, you, you know, if you don't do volunteer work, that's okay. But if, and everyone has some kind of hobbies or sports or things that they do. Um, I, think, I think those are very, very useful there as well. Um, uh, let's see. There was a th thought I had and I came up on one of the questions I saw. They better come up to it later, I guess. It's fine. Um, yeah, so, so, so show those there because then it shows that, you know, um, there are other things you like as well. And sometimes, you know, for example, um, I'm into... I'm into different sports. I play tennis, I play, um, I swim, I bike. I do a lot of photography as well. So sometimes even those kinds of things click in and say, hey, this guy's a photographer as well as he's right up my alley where we are. So when you're building a resume, you want to you wanna do something to understand who's going to read that and be able to peak their, their attention in some form or manner. You know, my son, for example, is uh, just now getting into um, finishing his third year computer science. But he, when he was in high school, he built his own system uh, to do Bitcoin mining. And he was like, you know, he just put one sentence down his resume. And like, you know, this is a big deal. Put it in there, you know. Um, then he was also helping with people with uh, putting comments in different blogs and stuff like that as well, like, like you can do here within uh, the cyber environment as well. Those kinds of things are important. Put them down there so you can have some of those, um, you know, Activities listed. So I think those are those are all really good in there. Um, okay, I think that's good. Um, yeah, someone's mentioning also if you're doing labs, building labs, and things like that. All, all those are good as well. So yeah. So here we're looking at some of the samples of resume. So this is a decent resume here. Uh, you notice the person's put their name and the email and phone number on top. Sometimes people don't like to put their personal information on on the resume either. But um, that's up to you, you know. Uh, I like to put it there because I want people to be able to reach out to me. If you're working with recruiters, they'll take that off because they want you to go through a recruiter. Okay? Oh, that's another point I want to bring up as well is two things actually I remember now that I do not have on here. One is absolutely important, um, create a LinkedIn profile. You must create a LinkedIn profile because everybody does it. The first thing I do when someone sends me a resume, I go look at their LinkedIn profile to see what they've got, okay? And make sure you update it. Keep track of what's there. Also on your LinkedIn profile, um, there's ways of going in and saying, yes, I'm open to recruiters calling me. You're gonna get bugged by people, but remember, if you're looking for a job or you're looking to switch jobs, that's okay. I'll, I'll take that, you know? Um, the worst that comes up is people bug you and you just say, no, thank you. 
or yes, I'm interested, contact me another time. Like I said, I'm I'm in my company, working my company right now for almost 10 years, and I, I thoroughly enjoy what I'm doing. But people keep approaching me. And when they approach me, do I say no? I don't sort of blindly say no. I said, eh, I'm not interested right now, but let's keep in touch. You know, who knows what happened in, in, in this environment we're in? No one, there's, there's honestly no job that's absolutely secure. So that's super, super important as well. Um, coming back to this resume, if you look at this, there's a nice brief summary of what the person has done. It gives me an overview for the work they have done. Then you notice with experience, put the company name you've worked for, what is the title you had, and then also put on, uh, put, put the dates as well that you've got there. I think that's important as well. I notice sometimes what I do is I, I look at the resumes. If I have more time, I look at the resumes. I look at the date sequences as well. And if I notice there's a gap, I'm going to ask, hey, what did you do for these three months? Or what did you do for these six months? You know, what it helps me understand is that the person is a hard worker, the person, there's continuity in what they're doing. Um, that's important. There will be times like a lot of us do work in, as, as contractors, and you're going to have a little bit of uh, pieces of work in between, whether you've worked for three months or six months or one year or so. Put those down. That, that's the other thing that's really important is whatever you put down here, be very, very um, honest about what you put on there. If you try and fake things and stuff like that, you're going to get picked up. Okay, It's just not going to fly with anybody. As a matter of fact, if I see weird things in there, if I have a lot of resumes, I completely just disregard the resume. Don't even go back and ask the person. You know what I mean? So those are kinds of things that I look at as well. Okay, um, and Like I said, list the jobs like this in chronological order. Um, this is one sample. There are several samples here. This one also... It's something where you could have left more white space on, on both sides of the margins there. That's important. Nowadays, the one prints these things out or, you know, before, in the olden days, people just write, write, write down notes and stuff like that. And some people still do. They write it out and they put notes down there and stuff like that. You know, I'll just make notes on, on the document as we go along. Okay. Um, also, again, list the type of work you've done. If there's tool sets you've done, um, we don't have too many samples in here, but if there's tools you've used for the certain work that you're doing, Go ahead and put those in as well, okay? All right, next slide, please. All right, so this also is important here where you worked as a, as a certain job, you have the position you've done there, your education is important. Um, if you speak different languages today, we're all working in a global environment, make sure you list those down there to, to what they are um, because that's useful. Uh, for example, I'm, I was hiring people to do work in Brazil and in Mexico, so I was looking for people Again, in, in, you know, not just Spanish-speaking people, uh, Spanish people, but I was looking for someone that could speak both Spanish and Portuguese because then they can handle both Brazil and, 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 and uh, Mexico for me because in Brazil they speak Portuguese. So and I've, I've, I've done work there with, with different companies. And again, outstanding environments to work in. A lot of very, very good, smart professionals that are, that are there as well. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, here's another sample of a different resume again. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little small here, but it's the same thing. You know, the person's got the title on the top. Another thing you can also do is this person has put sort of their, um, uh, their, their, their degree on the top there, so it catches your eye immediately as well. Again, this is a personal preference. It's nothing carved in stone here. Get the opinions of other people as well and things like this. Um, again, you know, contact information is there. A brief summary of the, the experience they've got, what they're looking for and then the, the, the list of the job and the tasks you're going to do as well, uh, or the tasks you perform for the company. Okay. Um, next slide, please. All right, so this is also another one here. Someone put down uh, on the top, they got sort of the core consulting skills, they have different education, things like that. I deal with a lot of employees from, not employees, but resources from around the world. Um, I find a lot of people from different countries um, are not super sensitive to their personal data. And this one resume I got like this. I actually have the information in there. We, we blocked it out of here. But the person gave me their nationality, their marital status. They gave me their date of birth. You know, if they have a working visa, things like that, they gave me all that stuff. And I'm like, dude, you shouldn't put these things on here. You know, so um, for privacy, it's, it's important not to put those kinds of things in there. Um, you may get questions for those in the, in the interview session. Um, like I said, we hire a lot of people from, India or from Latin America. So, so we do want to know what your visa status is. Do you have a work permit? Is it valid? Is it, um, how long is it valid for? Those are valid questions I can ask as an employer. Okay. Um, so those are kinds of things that are there. Um, 
Uh, I think that's it. That's it on this page here. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. So that's it for my presentation. Um, there's a lot of topics I covered, and there's a lot more I can cover as well. I imagine there's a lot of questions that are going to be coming up. So I'm going to hand it over to B to, um, to start off with what our questions are coming up in the chat. Yeah, well, and I will hand it over to Sam. He's awesome asking all those questions. Okay. There we go. Quick handoff up here. Um, so Prof has a couple questions. His first one is, what should a person write in the summary section of the resume if they are just starting out in security or just graduated from college and looking for their first job? Okay, so, so that's a great question. Um, what, what is important is um, what I look for people in, in people, uh, different characteristics, for example, enthusiasm. Okay? So put down what you've done before and then just put down things like, you know what, I'm, I'm starting out in the cybersecurity career. This is my first job, but I'm very keen to learn. I'm a fast learner, and I'd like to be able to um, assist your company to be more productive in the areas or the fields that they are in. And I'm open to learning any new technologies or any new skills. Um, if you've done any kind of work with, uh, and this again, see, a lot of times when people start out, um, like I said, I've gone through this with some of my, my, my high school students I'm mentoring. Um, do volunteer work for companies. Internships are a big deal. Try and find some internship. If you've done something constructive there, put that down. You know, If you volunteer for some organization and you've done something, I look for people with good um, skill sets in either leadership or communication, et cetera. Those are important things I look for. Um, and, and you know, there's got to be something that's going to catch my eye to be able to um, give you the chance for an interview because I've, I'll have a lot of resumes that come in. So, yeah. Sam, another kind of quick quick follow up that I have as a question as as you're explaining that. So, is it equivalently important to make the interviewer like yourself feel like they want to talk to you? So you convey the passion on one side, and then you also position yourself as someone that is interesting and maybe like fun to be around or. Are those both important? Yes, things? absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, so 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 the point is that, like I said, you get a lot of people that are keen, and enthusiastic, and want to learn, want to move forward. So, you know, if there's certain things you're passionate about, um, you know, whether whether it's extracurricular activities or even with um, you know hobbies or things you may have, um, yeah, absolutely. So so blend those two there. That's important to have there, you know, because nowadays. It's, it's important to have people who can, who can basically do multiple, uh, multiple jobs and have multiple skill sets there. So, does that answer your question, Sam? Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. Um, so, Prof has a follow-up question. So, when you're talking about considering the length of your resume and keeping it short, um, should they list maybe courses uh, or education that they've done and shorten the list of projects that they might be involved in? Or would the projects... Mm -hmm outweigh some of the coursework and their education type of type of stuff? Good, good question again. Um, so what I would do there is be selective of what you put in. Um, what's important is to catch my eye for um, what's going to be relevant for the job, I'm, the, the, the job I'm hiring for. Okay. So for example, if I'm looking for someone that's a, a, a SOC administrator, security operations center administrator, I want to know about the skill sets you have working with things like Splunk or QRadar or whatever. I want to know about your analytical skills. Um, I also want to look at, um, also if, you, if you have projects where you've done things like that, and you say, you know, I did a project where I did um, a bit of an AI or uh, you know, artificial intelligence or machine learning pro project or lab or something like that. Those are kinds of things I look for. So for example, in my resume, you'll find things like I did way back when, I did work with, um, you know, uh, training on, on, on hardware, you know. That's not going to be relevant for what I'm looking for now, right? So then I don't put those in. So you have to be selective about that. And again, if you're not sure about that, speak with a mentor, speak with a recruiter and say, hey, what do you think about this? Should I put this in? You know, that really helps as well. So, yeah. All right, awesome. Um, and the next question is kind of a blended one. So are there any things that you've seen on resumes that make the resume really stand out or make them really special? Is there something that you can do there to give it that twinkle? Um, the key thing I do is, I, like I said, you know, when I look at a resume, the first things I look at, I look at the summary, I look at the skill sets you have. Also, if I'm looking for someone, I keep hopping back on this, looking for a uh, security operations admin. I look at um, what kind of skill set they've got. And what's good is 
depending on the job you apply for, um, highlight some of the things. Highlight some of the, 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 the tools you've used. If you say, hey, I've done work with Splunk, I've done work with Curator, I've done work with Elk, et cetera, et cetera. Those are things that catch my eye very, very quickly. So what I do is when I look at a resume, those are the first things I look at. I look at the summary. I look at the jobs you've had. I look at the skill sets you've got, the tools you've used. Then I jump to education, okay? And I look at what kind of educational background you've got. So one thing I wanted to mention with education, which I didn't say when I talked about the piece there, um, a lot of people come back and say, hey, you know, um, I don't have a degree, but I want to I want to really get into cybersecurity and I'm good at it. I have an, a, a very good example. One of the managers I worked with before, literally, I mean, he didn't have a degree, but he was a super smart guy with Unix, Linux, and coding, you know, and he was just an outstanding person to work with, you know. So, so education is important. The more you have, the better, in the sense that at least a degree is good. If you have a master's, even better. Um, like I said, I hire people right now. One of the guys who worked with me has got, has got a PhD. Uh, actually, two of them are PhDs. So, um, you know, so, so those are important that are there. But, um, you know, try and, try and list, um, again, it, it's relevance really is what it is. I like that. Um, one more question from Raj is, uh, how much of your resume should be on your LinkedIn profile? I think your LinkedIn profile can be as, as long as you want, because that, that is something where, you know, you can have a choice. It's easy to scroll up and down on that, right? And again, you know, if you've, um, I, I, I mean, I don't even look at, if, you, if I'm looking for someone in an IT job, I don't even look at your high school information. Don't put that in. I don't care what high school you went to. I'm looking at your, your current education you've had. You know what I mean? Um, again, the jobs you've had, if you have jobs that are relevant to what you're looking for, um, LinkedIn is more like a, a, it's, it's a, it's a historical record that's there. I find LinkedIn, you can put as much as you want, it's fine, because people can scroll up and down quickly on that there. Again, with the resume, you're looking for something more specific as well. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, next question from John is, uh, this is kind of a unique one. Uh, so if I'm cited as a resource on my son's master's degree capstone uh, project, is that worth mentioning in your resume? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, because you, it shows some work you've done. It shows you've worked done with, with, with students and things like that. You know, you're, you're, uh, you're a people person, you know. And the thing is, like I said, we hire people for different roles. There are some people, like I said, who come in and say, you know what, Sam, do not ever put me in front of a customer. You know, I can't, I can't, I'm not in front of a customer. Or don't ask me to do a presentation. Like, I, there's no ways I can do that. I'll be sweating if you put me in front of even a manager, never mind putting me in front of a director or a CISO or something, you know. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. And that's also a learned skill again. So, so absolutely, you know, whatever, whatever sort of shows what shaped you, I think is important. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, Bob is next up on the questions. And the question is, um, so for cybersecurity, are there any other places that I should apply besides dedicated cybersecurity firms, service providers, or recruiters? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, so, so when you're doing a job search, you must remember there's not, there's not only companies that, that um, there's not only cybersecurity companies that need cybersecurity help. Every business needs that right now, okay? Um, we, with, our, with my corporate, my company I work with, we got multiple, um, what are called um, industry units we work with. So whether the business is in healthcare or education or banking and finance or, you know, IT, high tech, et cetera, all of those are looking for cybersecurity folks that are there. Um, look, look for those kinds of jobs. And again, I find one of the best resources is, is go on LinkedIn. Um, make sure you have, you, you can, you can uh, search your jobs on LinkedIn. Also on LinkedIn, I, and again, I'm not plugging LinkedIn for any other reasons, my personal choice completely, um, but because I like using it, I enjoy it, is, is, is linked, out, linked up to certain groups that are there as well, you know? Um, different kind of groups that you want to interact with. So um, with, with your job search, um, you know, what I typically do is when, you, when you're starting out, a lot of people like are saying, where do I start? How do I do this? I have no clue where to start, you know? Um, I think you should do some soul searching um, and, and, and basically say, what? Just sit down in, in, you know, in a quiet place sometime or whatever, whatever you like, your music you have or whatever, and um, write down what is your ideal job. Okay, and then look for that to say, you know what, I love working in banking, or I love working in healthcare, or I love working in 
uh, finance, or you know what, I just want IT jobs. I just want to work with IT companies. And that's what you target. Target as many of those as you can. Um, also, like I said, with LinkedIn, what's really important is make those connections. You know, I have over 800 connections in my LinkedIn profile. In say, for instance, someone is coming in and say, hey, I want to work with Silence. So I want to work with Splunk. As a matter of fact, a, a, a prime example here. For example, um, I used to work at a company called Quest Software before. And all of my, a lot of my buddies that were at Quest are not Splunk. Other guys are at uh, IBM. Other guys are at Oracle. Other guys are at these. So, it, so a lot of times my, 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 my mentees that I work with are like, hey, Sam, do you know any good Google? And guess what? Two doors down from my house, I've got a guy who's a Google, uh, Google, um, uh, he's a Google scientist. You know? So I hooked him up. You know, so these are kinds of things you're going to do. The connections you have are going to be really, really important, whatever connections you make. So those, those are critical. I like that. Networking, definitely key there. Um, next mm-hmm. question from Aprov. He is absolutely on a roll. The question is, um, in cybersecurity, are cover letters as important as maybe the resume itself? Great question. Yes, yes, absolutely. Actually, I didn't cover anything on, on, on cover letters at all, but absolutely important with cover letters in as well. And again, Cover letters keep them very short and concise. You don't want to, definitely not more than a page, but I'd say just a couple of paragraphs. So what what I want to see in a cover letter is um, something that attracts my attention in the sense of like, you know, um, during my work, during my career experience, I've done these kinds of different things, but I'd also now like to branch out into something else, you know? Um, So this is what I encourage a lot of uh, my, my, my people, my mentor, I would encourage them to do that. People, everyone thinks that, you know what, hey, you're going to have a science degree or you're going to have a computer science degree to get into IT or get into cybersecurity. Not at all. I have really smart people that are that have like a BA and um, I have one, one person who's got a BA in music and they came and started getting into IT and they loved it, you know, and they really excel at that as well, you know. So so absolutely important. Yeah, just, um, you know, try, try different things there basically, so yeah. Awesome. Um, have a good question from Lucy up next. Uh, how can a candidate demonstrate management skills when uh, they may not formally held a management position? Okay. Um, again, that's something you can put into your cover letter to say, part of my career experience, my, 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 my desire for my career direction is to get into more management. I've been doing a lot of IT work right now and I'd love to get into management, okay? And that's a great thing to put down because what I look for as well is sometimes I have roles for people and I say, hey, you know, I, right now, for example, I've got a guy who's, uh, who's a pen tester and um, he, he's working at pen testing and doing vulnerability management, but I need someone on site to be able to interact with the application owners because they need to now look at what the vulnerabilities are in an application and therefore, uh, they need to interact with the application owners to say, hey, you know, um, your patches are not up, up to uh, up to par right now. We need to upgrade your patches. So um, are, are you okay to do this? You know, I need some of your developers that have done some of this work on this, you know. So um, it's important to mention that, again, what it shows to me is that you are diversifying your career, and that's okay. That's okay to do that, you know. Um, I, I will tell you the opposite sometimes is harder. Sometimes people say, I have great management skill, but now I want to get into becoming a developer. Um, that sometimes gets a, little, gets a little difficult because the style of work they do is different. Um, going from tech to management is easy. Interesting point. I've never heard it put that way before, but I like that a lot. Um, mm-hmm. awesome. so, so John, with the uh, next hard-hitting question, um, how prevalent is awareness of cybersecurity among the Fortune 500 and 1,000 companies? It's extremely prevalent. But are they up to speed with what they're doing? Um, A lot of them have a lot of challenges. That's why I'm super busy. (laughs) That's why we are here as well, you know. Um, The thing is that you see with a lot of businesses, and and I would typically work in Fortune 200 companies around the U.S., around the globe, actually. Um, The issue that most large businesses have is that they are migrating from legacy software to the latest that's out there. You know, we're actually going a full circle right now. Um, You know, people are coming from mainframe computers to mini to distributed computers, and now they're they're going back to centralized computing with with, with a lot of cloud stuff that's there. Um, So so that's important, you know. Um, 
let's see, we have points that I can add to it. Um, and then, you know, this is where your skills uh, will come in play as well. The, the important thing I think is when you're, when you're putting information out there, um, especially if you get interviewed, it's important to state things like this to say, hey, you know, how secure are you guys? And, and I mean, I've asked the question of, of some uh, VPs and, and CIOs and things like that. And they'll come back and say, oh, yeah, yeah, we're like, you know, solid rock. We, we, we've got everything encrypted and everything is solid, you know. And then all of a sudden, when we get into the project, you know, and you ask these people and said, so do you have uh, PII information or do you have any uh, PCI information in there, you know? And they'll say, yeah, and is, this is encrypted. No, you know? So, so these kinds of things happen all the time. So um, every company you work with right now will need some kind of cybersecurity help. Um, no doubt about that. Does that, does that answer your question there? Whoever asked that? Yeah, I think it does. Um, appreciate that, Sam. Lori has a question. Uh, can we send you a connection uh, to connect on LinkedIn? Sure. No problem uh, at all. Maybe we can follow up uh, in Slack on that. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Next question down here uh, from Bob is, how can I describe myself as an independent self-learner without sounding too cliche? Or is that even relevant to list on your resume? No, I think that's important. You know, um, I, I look for people like that to say, you know what, I I I love learning. Um, I learn fast. Um, those are kinds of things I look for in a resume as well. I think that's very very important. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> what I do sometimes, some of the, the people I interview, um, just to sometimes kind of throw them off a little bit. I say, tell me what is your ideal job. I said, uh, assume you have no barriers. So you got all the money you want. You've got everything, you, you know, that's perfect for you. What is it you want to do, you know? One guy had the audacity to say to me, uh, I don't want to do anything. I said, okay, scratch. That guy's not going to be hired. <laughs> you know? But it's, so it's the attitude you have and what you bring to the table. You know? So that's, that's important. For, for me, it is as a hiring manager. I like that. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. He has a, uh, he has a question. And it says, is the cybersecurity talent shortage real? Is it even real? Or have you heard of challenges identifying talent as you go and hire? Absolutely real. Absolutely real. And it's going to be there for the next at least five to 10 years, if not more. It's, it's continuous. I mean, it's continuous. There's, there's no two ways about it. I shouldn't even put a, a, a number of years on it. Because the thing that happens in, in any IT world is that, uh, you know, I started out, like I said, with just... Uh, undergrad in computer science, and then I moved towards cybersecurity, right? Um, and this is anything that happens with software is everything leapfrogs each other, right? So for example, if Microsoft is saying, you know, we're, we're rock solid right now with uh, Office and Exchange and, you know, with everything we've got, you know, there's going to be gaps that are there and somebody's going to find something that was open somewhere. And, and gosh, it's, it's, it's so scary with some of the companies that are out there where, you know, there's so many vulnerabilities that are there um, and people can get it, you know. So having said that, that what happens is um, technologies leapfrog each other. As soon as someone said, hey, like, you know, we, we, our portfolio, our, our software is rock solid, we're good with this here, someone's going to find some way to break it, you know. And then the, the software company come back and say, okay, yeah, we saw you did that, we got a patch, we'll patch it, we'll go back on again, you know. It's a continuous thing that's going to happen and it's, this is the one thing in, in IT and especially in cybersecurity. The only constant you have is change. It's going to constantly be changing, you know? And that's another thing. That's why I said I look for people who want to keep learning as they go along. You have to keep learning new technologies that are there. Stuff I learned in my undergraduate degree, I mean, they're obsolete right now. The basics are there. The foundations are there. But th those things are obsolete, you know? I'll really date myself or I tell you some of the things I learned, but let's not go there. <laughs> um, we have another question um, as, a, as we're getting close to the end here um, so it talks about what pieces of education can you include on your resume is it limited to courses or virtual labs or projects or are really all those things a good measure of demonstrating uh, continuing education is there anything that you wouldn't put on there yeah so, so what I, I'll tell you what I look for and then you can decide what you're going to put on this like I said I look at what kind of bachelor's degrees you have or graduate's degrees you have or things like that. 
Then I look for any courses you've taken as well. For example, you know, if I'm looking for someone that's uh, a specialist with, uh, with IoT, Internet of Things, there's not many degrees on that yet, but there's great courses out there. If some people have done courses and things like that, go ahead and put that down. You know, if I'm looking for someone and saying, hey, you know, I'm going to do a bit of IoT stuff, but I'm also going to be looking for um, someone that's going to be doing working with cryptocurrencies, for example. You know, you can come back and tell me what you've done with Bitcoin or you've done, you know, anything with uh, coding for Ethereum or things like that, you know, Ripple and all those. Those are all technologies out there. Do I use them every day? No, but I'm interested in it. I like it. And see, that's an important point as well. If sometimes you put something on that may not be totally relevant to the job, but it clicks with me as a person, as a hiring manager, I would say, hey, I want to talk to guy, this guy about this stuff. He's done some cool stuff here. He can help us with a different side of the project here or the work that we have. That we need. I love that. Um, yeah, yeah. I myself like some of that cryptocurrency stuff, so I find it very interesting. Yeah. Um, but it looks like we've actually reached um, the end of our questions. We have some praise from you. Um, in the chat. Well, it looks like we got one more here uh, from Lori. And the question is, uh, was there ever a specific resume you reviewed that made you say, wow, uh, this is a great resume? If so, what made it stand out from the others? Um, great question. Um, like I said, you know, across the board, I look at, um, I just look at the skill sets people have. Um, also, what's, what's important is I look at some, somehow that, that diversity as well. Like I said, you know, um, if I see someone that's had a music degree and all of a sudden they're going to IT or something like that and they have education to, to back it up, you know, that helps a lot. Um, um, I think if you have, like, different things that you do, if I see people that have very, a very mundane sort of a career path, um, that kind of concerns me a little bit. I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't sort of, that kind of resume wouldn't appeal to me so much, you know. Um, but like I said, it's a combination of your, um, your leadership skills, your education, your tool sets you've worked with, um, and also any extracurricular activities. So um, hard to say which ones really, really stand out. But um, yeah, th those are the things I look for in, in the resume as well. That's awesome. Um, and one final question uh, here from uh, Michael that submitted. This is a good one. Uh, how important is it to go back and get a degree if you already have five years of relevant experience in the workforce and maybe a couple certifications? You know, that's a very debatable question. I've had a lot of people ask me that. Um, and, and today, especially, edu you know, education is very expensive. Um, I think in the long run, it'll help you. I, I never tell people not to go ahead and educate themselves. I think whatever you can do to get the education, go for it. If you've had, if you've had experience, and I, I actually kind of think that in the long run, I think it'll help you more. I'm thinking about other people as well that, that are higher. They look at what degrees you have. Some companies, for example, insist you have an undergraduate degree, even though you have great qualifications. Sometimes there are exceptions like that. Um, so I would say go for it. I'd say, I'd say go, I'd never stop anyone from education. Another thing I'd encourage people to do also is when you're doing it, when you're trying to educate yourself, always bring it up with the company you're working with right now. Bring it up to the management. Even if you're not doing IT work for them and you're saying you want to do something different and you want to do another course, ask them if they help you fund your education. Like I said, education is very expensive right now. Also, the other thing is go ahead and apply for scholarships. You will be surprised. I went to my son's uh, orientation at university and they said, you know, there's so many scholarships that are there and people just don't apply for them. We have money sitting on the table, you know? Um, and, 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 and they threw weird stuff at us. They were saying, like, for example, they said, we have a Polynesian students club. It says, we have money. We look for people who, who, who have a Polynesian background. And even we have some people that don't have a Polynesian background and they applied and we gave them the money because, you know what, no one took it. So... Education is really important. I would, never, I would never say no to that. So absolutely, go ahead and do that. Do your degree, do your master's. Absolutely important. All right, Lori actually um, submitted one, one final thing in here. I know I keep saying one final thing, but there's awesome questions. Uh, so Lori asked, uh, do you think a paid resume review service um, has any value? Or to teach yourself the resume skills, um, build it yourself, and have a really final polished product when you develop those skills and help you do that on your own? as an alternative to paying for a service? So again, um, very biased opinion for me. I, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. I'm a cheap guy. I don't want to pay for things like that. 
So what I do is I'd rather learn how to do it. And what I do is, there, you know, there are a lot of people out there in business and in the different communities that are there that'll do things like this for you for free. Um, what I did during my career, I never paid for a resume service. Um, and then some of them are good. Some I, I don't know, to be honest with you, I've not used them uh, to, to be able to make a, an unbiased uh, statement on that. But I generally, what I try to do is I look at, you know, while I was busy building my career, I try and find mentors I can work with. And then also um, recruiters. Recruiters are great people to work with. A lot of them, you know, there's all kinds of varieties of people out there. Recruiters will be cut and dry to say, hey, you know what, I'm sorry, I don't have the time to help you with this. Others will say, absolutely, Sam, no problem. Here, let me help you with this. This is not great at all. As a matter of fact, I just did that recently with my son's resume. He, to me, his resume looked great. I gave it to my recruiter friend. He's like, no, dude, I don't like this. You've got this band on top. You can band on the side. You know, uh, he actually had a band on the side there with a the color. And he said, you know, you read normally from left to right. You know, I couldn't, it, the stuff at the bottom of that band didn't attract my attention. You, you know, you got you to do a different format. So I'll redo it for you. I said, great. So that, that's my opinion. That I, Honestly, I, I couldn't probably answer that question um, uh, too objectively because I've never used a uh, resume practice service. Well, it sounds like based on your preferences, the Slack community would be perfect with our career services channel with all those mentors yeah. that give fantastic yeah. resume reviews. Um, that's awesome. Uh, and how can they, uh, how can our learners find you on Slack, Sam? Um, I think B is going to post my, my Slack handle there. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, absolutely, yeah. It's, Sam Carson, at Sam Carson, and you will see mentor. Yeah. So, and if not, you can reach out to me and I can make an introduction, so don't worry about it. We yeah, we'll also include that in the PowerPoint slide. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, B, that reaches us uh, to the end of the questions. Do you want to send us off? Yes. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Sam, for your time, for your incredible feedback and insights, and it's great to, to know um, all these great recommendations from someone that is hiring people and really is looking for great talent and uh, just providing that feedback is so valuable to us. So thank you for your time and thank you everybody for joining. We look forward You're to- You're most welcome. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thanks. See you guys. Have a good one, guys.